Hey guys, it's Kippy Killer, and I'm back for another Redstone video. So, the other day I was going through YouTube, and I saw this cool video by uh, Cass from the Mizuma channel, and it was on this reprogrammable combination lock, and it was stupidly small, I was blown away. So, um, I wanted to design my own. I was inspired, and this is uh, what I built. I built my own, and this is the result. So, the interface is a nine digit button panel, and we have a light here to tell you when the correct password is, uh, has been entered, and we have a light here to tell you when you're changing your password. And this one, uh, you don't actually need to have this, uh, this interface, you can have any interface that you want. So, you could have a two by two button panel, or you could have just a bunch of buttons in a row. Uh, you can put the lights somewhere different, and yeah. So let's actually get on to showing you this thing in action. So this particular system is 8 digits long, and uh, the passcode is currently from this top button down to here, from this top button down to here, the middle button, and then the bottom button. So let's put that in and see what happens. As you can see, you can actually put them in pretty quickly. So when we press this bottom button, what should happen is this light turns on, and our storage opens, so we get access to all of these chests. There's currently nothing in them, so it's a bit pointless. Um, and then from here, there are two things that you can actually do. So the first thing you can do is you can actually uh, close up your base or storage or whatever, and all you need to do is press one of these nine buttons. So let's just press that one. And that closes it back up, and you'd have to put in your password once again uh, to gain access to it again. The other thing that you can do from this point is you can actually change your password. So if you press this bottom button whilst this light is on, um, it'll go into password change mode, and you just put in another eight digit uh, passcode, and that's the new password. So let's do that. So let's put in another one. Let's go from this top button, let's press this top button twice, this one twice, this one twice, and then this one twice. So this does actually accept double digits, and this bottom button can also be part of your passcode, and it won't switch to change in password mode uh, unless you've already put in your password. So that's really cool. Uh, that's practically the whole machine, uh, all the functionality. So how about we get onto explaining how this thing works? So here I've got a few models. Uh, this one is the one that we were just uh, messing around with. Uh, this is a five-digit version, and this is uh, some of the components that I'm going to be explaining in just a second. So, let's first of all take a look at the redstone. As you can see, it's got a pretty damn small footprint. It's only 8 by 7 and then it expands downwards with every uh, extra digit that you have in your passcode. So every two layers here is one digit, and this is eight digits and five digits. So, yeah, so you can have as many digits as you want, really. Um, but the more you have, the slower the system response gets. Um, not by much, but it's uh, definitely there. Um, that's because we're sending signals down the torch towers and then back up the torch towers. Um, so let's actually just see how fast this one is in comparison. If we just put in the correct password. It's not too much faster, but it's definitely faster. Um, so, I, th I think the uh, best place to go from here is to start explaining how this machine actually works. And I'm actually going to start over here. So, these are two sets of signal strength shift registers. And all that is, is when you input new data, 
it shifts all of the data down one cell and then the top one gets occupied by the input. So this is the core part of the machine. Um, this one stores your eight, well in this case eight, uh, latest inputs to the machine and this one stores the password and this makes it extremely easy for us to compare and one thing that you should uh, take note of is the input is actually to this dust here so this uh, shift register actually gets one more signal strength than this shift register and the reason for that is it's easier to test if this one is one greater than this one uh, instead of just seeing if they're the same. So that's why we have that, and I'll explain that when we get onto the red circuit. So the way that these shift registers actually work is when you put some input here, it won't actually put it into the shift register yet, and that's because we need to three tick either this dust or this dust. So this one ships the blue, and this one ships the cyan, so I can actually demonstrate this. If we have 15 signal strength here, and we input it here, you see uh, the signal actually gets put here. So this one's, uh, you know, let's start here, so this one is slightly powered, this one is not powered, and this one is fully powered, and if we shift again, you see that data gets shifted down, this one's slightly powered, this one's not powered, this one's fully powered, this one's fully powered. So that's how the shift registers work. Now, what we can now do is uh, go onto the interface and how it interfaces with us. We'll see how this actually comes into play with the machine. So, when we input a value, what actually happens is the button that you press gets converted into a signal strength via the magenta circuit. Now this is the same circuit that uh, Cass used in his design, but uh, it was simple and I didn't really feel like redesigning it, so I just used this. Um, so what happens is, depending on which button you press, it'll activate a different part of this uh, redstone line, and it will give it a different signal strength through this comparator. And something that we're going to take note of for later is that this bottom button here, actually goes up here and gives a signal strength of 15 to this comparator and that's very important um, but yeah so whenever you press any button this goes through here and has one signal strength taken off it and I'll explain why uh, all you need to know is that the uh, greatest signal strength that is valid from this keypad is 14 signal strength this then goes into this dust on the shift registers so that is our current input to the shift registers and then we're going to shift this one and sometimes we'll shift this one so the first thing that happens is it powers this dropper hopper which gives a three tick to this tower uh, torch tower which shifts the cyan so now the cyan is holding the new input and then if we're in password change mode this line will be off, which means it will also turn off this line. So that will activate this one. So if we're in password change mode, uh, the new password will start being put into this array. Uh, shift register, <laughs> whatever. Um, so that's how that bit works. So let's actually put the password in real quick. So we've just shifted, uh, this This blue one has stayed the same because we're not in password change mode. And we've shifted those five digits into this array. And we know that these uh, cells are actually one less signal strength than this one. So if we have the correct password, if we take this signal strength here, and we subtract this signal strength here, we should get only one. So if we go around the front again, what you can see is because it is one, uh, this torch turns off, which means that this dust can turn off, and this uh, power can't power this. So the only time that this dust is turned off is when 
we have the correct digit. And then you can take this for all of the cells, propagate it back up, and then uh, you can turn on the snap. Now let's say we want to switch into password change mode. Um, if the password is correct, this torch is off. And when we press the bottom button, this torch turns off. So how do we do that? Now this is uh, really interesting. So this gets a signal strength of 15 when we press the bottom button. And there is a really, really cool way of testing for a signal strength of 15. And that is like this. So say you have a block that you're powering and then you have a comparator. And then behind the block that gets powered, you have a inventory block, uh, which can be read by the comparator. What will actually happen is if, and only if, that block receives 15 signal strength, the comparator will turn on, as you can see here. So this is how I did it. Um, this is a super useful uh, trick, which is just why I wanted to show it off. So that's how we detect um, if the bottom button is pressed. Then this goes down here into this AND gate, and that gives a pulse to this dust, which goes through the system, and it powers this torch tower. And we have a 4-tick repeater here, I think. Yeah, so this is a 4-tick pulse, uh, or greater. And that is important, due to the way that this torch tower works. So let me explain this. Um, we already know that if we 3-tick this dust, it will uh, shift all of the data down by one. But if we four tick it, all of these torches here are off long enough for these repeaters to turn off. And then these repeaters, when they turn off, power all of these torches, which fills all of the memory with 15 signal strength. Now this is why we subtracted the one signal strength off of the input here, because 15 is invalid. It's an invalid input. So when this memory is filled with 15 signal strength, we know that we are changing our password. So we can actually detect that down here with these uh, comparators here. Um, when this bottom cell has a signal strength of 15, we know that we are still changing the password and this torch will turn on when we are. So that's how we detect that. So when we press the bottom button, the memory gets set to 15 as you can see, and then this turns on because we're detecting 15 signal strength here. Now this also turns off this line, which means that we can actually now input to the blue shift register. So whenever we put in a value, it doesn't just go into the cyan, it also goes into the blue, which means that we can now set up the new password. So let's put a few digits in, let's just go one, two, Three, four. So you'll notice now that four of these don't have a full signal strength. And when this bottom one gets overwritten, let's put in five. You can see the signal goes back up here. And it's detected that we have finished putting our password in. So this line goes back on, so the password can't be changed and we are back into our correct password mode. And that is practically how the whole system works. It's pretty cool. And then uh, naturally, if we just press any button, the whole cyan shift register gets shifted down and it goes out of sync. And so we know that we no longer have the correct password. And that is how the whole system works. Um, if you want to look at this in greater detail, then there'll be a well download in the description. So uh, make sure to have a look at that. Um, but that's about it. Uh, a few key points of this that I really want to point out is this trick here. If you don't know it, this is so, so useful. Definitely try and integrate this wherever you can, or wherever it's needed. And then um, my other favorite part of this build is the way that this torch tower does two things depending on which signal uh, pulse length you give it. So, yeah, that's uh, my favorite parts of the system. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. And if you want to see more stuff like this in the future, then make sure to subscribe. I've been KB Killer. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you later.